I was thinking I'm never going to use my 1525 plus again. So let's boot it up. As you have probably heard already, Synology have decided to allow third party drives to be used on their systems again. So I'm going to install the update and show you what are the changes. So let's go to download center, download the DSM. So you got their options 7.2 and 7.3. If you only want to update your compatibility list to allow third party drives, you can just install this update pack, but 7.3 has this pack included. So let's have a look at the release note. So there are a few things that caught my eye. So first of all, you cannot downgrade your DSM. Once you install this DSM, you cannot go back. So there are certain models that will not get a notification about this new DSM. Cosmology is saying they are releasing this update in stages just to test out. And then there is something very interesting. This is going to be the last upgradable version for certain models. This means if you're owner of these NASes and you install this 7.3 DSM, this is going to be the last DSM you are going to be installing on this NAS before it goes end of life. Usually Synology do maintain their old DSM versions, but they never have priority. In a past experience, I saw that older DSM might take even 6 to 12 months to get an update for zero day vulnerabilities. This is how they push people to update to their latest DSM, which is usually the case of them forcing people to strip away features like transcoding, video station, or hard drive and SSD compatibility. So this basically means that owners of these NASes will be forced to upgrade their systems to something newer. So this is a full list of models that will not be able to upgrade their DSM above 7.3. And that's Flash Station 2017-2018 models. This is actually two years before recommended uh, lifetime. Normally Synology support their NASes up to 10 years, but majority of these NASes have been around only seven to eight years. So there will be limited updates on Flash Station models, on XS series models, as new as 2019 model, Plus series models up to 2019, and Value series up to 2018, and J series up to 2019. So these are the people that should be very concerned what is going on and how long their systems will be supported. In this press release, they also remind about H.264, H.265 transcoding. They are still trying to sell the idea that your devices like TV and phone are supposed to do all the transcoding, which is ridiculous because this is not something that you can do when you're away somewhere remotely. Your internet speed is not going to be fast enough to receive 4K file to be transcoded on your phone. It's ridiculous. But they're saying they will keep the transcoding for H.264 if you install Surveillance Station, their CCTV app, or if you buy their DVA series dedicated to uh, surveillance solution, you will have H.264 and 265 codecs available to you, which is a nice way of upselling their most expensive products. They're also saying the better space is now end of life and they have discontinued it. Some compatibility changes, there's no more support for PHP 8.0 or below and a few other things, but let's have a look what's new. What are the things that might convince someone to upgrade to 7.3? So you can delay updates up to 28 days. They're introducing Synology Tiering and Synology Tiering Vault. This is something very useful if you have multiple pools, hard drive pool, SSD pool, NVMe pool. So the system will automatically move some of the colder data that you have to hard drives and data that you access more frequently will be moved to SSD storage. This is a very good feature to improve the performance of your NAS. QNAP had this for ages. They also added XFAT support built in the DSM. You don't need to install package anymore. They also have added support for backing up regarding verifying server certificates. They have added support for selecting organization units. They added option to automatically lock encrypted storage. Also improved their two-factor authentication. They also have fixed uh, holes in their operating system as regarding hyper backup, CURL, Apple Talk, SQL, and certain security vulnerabilities. So these are the things that may convince someone to upgrade their DSM. But let's go back and install this DSM and see how it looks. Is this update going to allow me to install any third-party drives or is there still some sort of limitations? Okay, let's plug it in. Okay, for fun of it, I'm gonna be using standard NAS drives like RNMOV. I'm gonna use Kingston SSD, Seagate Skyhawk, 14 terabyte Western Digital HC320 and something ridiculous like Seagate Pipeline HD2. Let's have a look what happens. Okay, that's our SSD. Okay, next one up, Seagate RNMOV, Western Digital Ultra Star, 
Seagate Skyhawk 14 terabyte and Seagate Pipeline 500 gigabyte. Okay, let's boot it up. Let's go to find Synology.com. Okay, now we found our Synology. Let's click connect, click install and it automatically offers 7.3 as a default operating system. So you can get your DSM from the cloud or from your disk. Let's click continue and let's see what's hand. And let's have a look what's going to happen after we install DSM 7.3. Okay, NAS is now restarting. Okay, now it's installing built-in packages. And that's it, DSM 7.3 is installed. Let's set it up. Let's go to storage manager, hard drives. And as you can see, every single drive comes up as healthy. And this even includes this silly Seagate pipeline drive, <laughs> which normally never existed on any compatibility list. But now it's all green and healthy. So let's create a pool and you can pull all of the drives together apart from SATA SSD. This is a change they did a few years ago. They don't allow mixing hard drives and SSDs in the same pool. It was possible before, but not anymore. I'm going to set up JBOD. Okay, let's have a look at the cache. Regarding caching, there's no changes. We are going to try to use our SATA SSD. It does allow us to create a SSD cache using SAT SSD. There was never an issue with SSD caching. Synology allowed using third-party drives for SSD caching. There was something they didn't allow and it was storage space on SSDs. Synology did not allow creating storage pools on NVMe SSDs. If I want to create storage on SAT SSD, it's okay, but NVMe's are not allowed. It has to be Synology NVMe. We can quickly test this out if it's still true. Okay, let's go to storage manager, hard drives, SSDs, and you can see these are third party NVMEs and they are still not recognized. So if you wanted to create a cache, you cannot do this. And it says none of these NVMEs are allowed. Even for SSD caching, you need to have compatible NVMEs. And obviously the same applies for the volumes. Create storage pool, click next, and there are two drives that do not meet their criteria. They say this drive has not been tested or validated, so it will not work. If we go to their page, they say that in order to create NVMe pools, you need to have 25 series model or certain 23, 22 or 21 series models, but it has to be Synology NVMe. Okay, now we found out that we can install DSM on 25 plus series models, even using third party unverified drives that are not even on compatibility lists. But regarding NVMEs, you cannot use them for caching or storage pools. You will still need to use a little bit of hacking and apply a script to enable those NVMEs for pools and caching. But the main question remains, for how long these drives will be supported? Because if Synology did this once, they will want to do it again. So they will need to live with this stain on their name. Are they going to survive with this bad PR in the future? Time will show. But at least at this point, people that bought 25 series models and they got stuck with their third party drives, they can now install DSM and use those models happily ever after, we hope. Thank you for watching. See you next time.